We've got Mom Eren. There's been a lot of stuff about restraint this season. The flashback with his mother and also Levi told him that. But that's not our Eren. <laughs> Eren doesn't know the meaning of the word restraint. Especially now with Mom Killer Titan. Smiling Titan. This should be a fun episode. <laughs> Scream! That was nice. Oh, are you gonna- is she going after Erwin? Oh, okay. Okay, I was about to say. That, I think, will be the end of the, the sympathy, or the considering both sides, if or when the characters start killing each other. That kind of thing, like what Ymir just did, I think is, is so important for keeping the characters human and maintaining our connection with them, you know? It would be very difficult for me to get behind characters when they're killing other characters I like, you know what I mean? And I know that some of the characters, like Reiner and Bertholdt especially, have done really terrible things, but I think that there's another consideration there, which is time. I think if they were to do that now, like, if they were to, like, smash Connie, that would be it for me. I should not have said that out loud because everything I say out loud like that comes true. I feel like it's very likely that some kind of tragedy like that will happen, but I feel like it'll be a huge mistake. <laughs> oh, wow. What a line. Erwin never once loses his cool. Like, the dude is missing an arm. Honestly, it'd be really hard to replace. There are not that many people like Erwin. It's been fascinating to react to this series, especially recently. I'm noticing all these discussions pop up about the, the morality of these characters. There's a lot of controversy, which is really exciting. It's really interesting. Some of the comments I've seen have focused on the idea that, well, of course, Eren is justified in killing Reiner and Bertholdt. And I think I may have given the mistaken impression that I don't understand Eren or I don't sympathize with Eren. You know, like, I think that he has very good reason to be extremely upset. Like, his reactions make perfect sense. But there's a difference between understanding why someone is some way and also thinking that that way is right. You know what I mean? And I think the times where I'm critical of the characters, not just Eren, but Mikasa and now weirdly Armin, are when they fall into this like ends justify the means kind of thinking where everything is justified or anything can be justified as long as it's a matter of meeting a goal that you think is important or protecting people that you, you care about. But I'm always going to resist that thinking on some level, even if I don't totally disagree, just because I feel like it's a slippery slope. Like if you believe anything is justified towards your, your ends, anybody can justify anything because everybody thinks they're right about what ends are important. You can't have a functioning world where everybody creates their own morality based on things that they want or desire. Why am I saying this now? It's tricky because I support Erwin, right? Like, I'm a big Erwin fan. And it seems at the surface level that Erwin also falls into that thinking, right? Like, here he's saying, I'm replaceable. It doesn't matter. Do whatever it takes to save Eren. But I would make a big distinction between the way Erwin does it and the way other characters do it. Erwin is actually operating from from values and principles. It's just that those values and principles lead him to be self-sacrificial. Notice that he never lies, right? I think that was a key moment when they did the orientation for the new cadets. He told them like, you are going to die. Like if you join, you're gonna be at my whim and I'm going to do whatever I think is right and that means your death. Only sign up if you're okay with that. And so from that point on, he's not breaking any, any code. He's setting a clear set of values and operating by it and everybody can follow it because it's transparent. So there's no manipulation, there's no lie. Compare that to the last episode where Mikasa is literally trying to get her friends to kill another friend through coercion, you know? For me, the tone is totally different. Erwin, for all his talk about, you know, becoming the enemy, so far at least, I don't think he's done anything to compromise basic human principles. I think he's been an honorable person, and I think that him showing up and risking himself is one of the things that really solidifies that for me. Like, the dude is not a phony. He's not playing a game. Like, this is real, and everyone knows that. And like, who in the right mind, you know, who's a soldier would not give their lives for this? Time is no longer a factor for that guy. Here we go. Now, Aaron, don't freak out. <laughs> You're right. Did Hanus really just block the hand? Well, I guess Titans are light, right? Oh, this is his. This is his revenge. Oh no. Oh no. I'm... Oh no no no. Oh, he's, he's in too deep. It means a lot to him. There's just so much going on right now. This is crazy. Yeah, it's just total chaos. I can't help but wonder if that means something bad is coming for the people inside the walls. I mean, it's already sort of happening. 
We're slowly transitioning into Historia. Be honest this time. Yeah, total lie. <laughs> These two are made for each other. <laughs> yeah, they're like reflections of each other's things. I feel like this has the potential to either be an amazing relationship or a toxic relationship and no in between. Oh, damn. She got her first kill and now she's uh, hot stuff. <laughs> it would be so glorious if Hans destroys this Titan, but it's that would be a little bit too good to be true. Aaron is not going to pass this chance out. You're crazy if you think otherwise. <laughs> Goal unclear. Try your other hand. This is such a great moment for Hannes, but it, it just makes me really uncomfortable. Don't get... No. Told you. And then he, he spins out of the hand. Someone. Erwin. Levi. Mikasa. Minus, you idiot. That's it's over for Aaron. I knew it, I knew it, and I still hate it. <laughs> Hannes, you dumb idiot. I could just see it in his face that he was gonna die. He was too excited. Pop quiz, what's the number one killer in the world of Attack on Titan? Titans? Wrong. It's hope. Hope is a death sentence in this world. So usually that would have been a chance for redemption. But for Hannes, there was something of a, of a dark moment, right? Like, he had been shouldering the burden of how things went down the first time this whole time. And I think that's part of why he's been so driven recently on this mission to, to help Eren. You know, it's not only that he's known them for a long time, although that's a huge part of it. He's carrying the weight of that encounter. And so there's a little bit of a trap there, rushing in, just looking for an end to the, the suffering which he got, just in the worst possible way, not at all what you would want for him. Amazingly, I feel really impressed by Eren, though. I feel like that incident kind of shot us through his armor, like his hateful persona that he usually carries around, and into just like the lost kid, you know, calling for his mother. That for me was a very humanizing moment. I, I deeply sympathize with him for losing Hannes like that, like on top of everything. And the one time I actually want him to like transform and just rip this titan's throat out, he's somewhat the opposite. He's just a broken kid, you know? It's very interesting. <laughs> Mikasa showing some sweetness. And this is something Eren doesn't really see usually. This is it with Mikasa for the show. Feels like something really big just happened, like a big turning point. He doesn't even need to transform. <laughs> Did he just control that titan with his fist? Is this the Matrix? This is a useful power. <laughs> titan control. What does that mean? Even inside the walls there's a future. The coordinate. No, I can't take any more. Hannes was enough. Choice time. Creepy. But something about what Eren did reveals that there's a future inside the wall, so it's not as bad for Historia. Whatever that means. I kind of love this trio, this Bertholdt, Reiner, Ymir trio. The special people, but also the outcasts. They're a good match. It's my fault for talking about Hannes. 
Oh my god, it's a season finale, I forgot, which means we're gonna get another ridiculous mid-card. <laughs> the Titans which have long plagued humanity are of human origin. Yeah, that's pretty clear at this point. Titans are not sent by the heavens to punish us for our sins. Okay, that was a little bit more straightforward than that wall story in season one, and a lot better than Crackers. <laughs> Yeah, it does give the three of them a feeling of, you know, camaraderie and importance. It's like them against the world. Looking good with that facial hair. Nope, 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 nope. Yeah, damn.巨人が僕らを無視して、ライナーたちに迎え続けていったからだ。そのことで。it's nice that he included John in that. <laughs> really, it was all Armin, probably. That was very charitable. That's a dangerous thing to say. It all depends on how he interprets that. Yeah, so he knows on some level. We've been killing humans this whole time. Oof. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. But does it really change anything? I mean, would you have done anything differently? What was that face? He looks happy. Yeah. He just realized something. Or I guess it might be a relief that it's just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Humans at least are known, right? Like, you know humans. <laughs> Look who it is. Who the hell is that? Look at those abs. <laughs> Damn. Ooh, there's just a lot to talk about in this episode. I'll start off by saying this is one of my favorite episodes of the show so far. I think the season set up this episode, this finale, really well. It's something I love where you have different conflicting interests converging, which sort of blurs the lines, you know? You got Reiner and Bertholdt doing their thing, and then you have Eren and Mikasa with their own particular philosophy, and you have Erwin who's on their side, but, you know, sort of different from them. And then you have Ymir who's kind of like straddling the line between them, and then you're attacked by Titans, you know? It's, it's a lot at once, which is, it's really exciting. And I think one of the best things about it is that it eases off the the tension we had at the last couple episodes where it's like everybody's at their at each other's throats ready to just kill this kind of puts that in perspective it's like remember we have a common enemy to some degree then the han's death was was tragic and hurt me really deeply but one positive that came out of it for me is i feel like it was actually a really great and touching moment for Eren. I feel like I saw more humanity in him this episode than I've seen in him for, for a while. Maybe ever. It looked like grief, you know, which I feel like is, it's easier for me to get behind that than like, I'm gonna destroy the whole world, you know, and finally I'm free to kill everyone, you know, whatever it is. That was the response that you would expect from a normal person. Sadness. Because Daddy Hans was one of the only adult parent-like figures in his life, even you know, if it was a very limited capacity. And also a sweet moment for Mikasa, and a sweet moment for Eren and Mikasa bonding. I think that they kind of need that. I said it feels like a turning point. I don't know if it'll actually take root, you know, but that was something that I enjoyed watching from the two of them. I mean, there's just a whole lot of character stuff. Erwin is, you know, some of the, the greatest stuff ever. It was very brief, but I really love the Erwin-Levi conversation at the end there. They have a little bit of a ideological split, you know, speaking of ends justify the means. Levi coming out and saying that it's not even worth it or reflecting on, you know, what the death and killing of Titans actually means. Levi, you know, he continues to surprise me, you know, from my first impression to now. He gives off this vibe of like, you know, just being callous, cutthroat, bloodthirsty maybe, violent, but he actually is like the most sensitive out of everyone, amazingly. I think that was a really great touch. I get where Erwin's coming from though. I think I understand why, or at least partly why he's smiling. Something about the way things played out this season. In some ways, things are more confusing, but in other ways, they've been demystified. The knowledge that the Titans are humans, some somehow feels safer. I mean, nothing really has changed, right? In fact, the danger escalates, but just conceptually, it's like, well, human enemies are something we know. It's always human enemies. And so if we can, you know, find out who the humans are, suddenly it's not fighting gods or it's not fighting mythical beasts. It's, it's fighting flesh and blood people like us, which on some small level is 
is comforting or creates room for some optimism. They are making progress. They are learning. And as a viewer, I think that's one of the things that season two does a great job of is it doesn't give you everything. I mean, it raises a lot of questions. There were a lot of questions raised in this episode. Like what is the deal with like inside the wall versus outside the walls? What is the plan for, for people inside? Why did Ymir think they were doomed at first, but now think it's safe for Historia to be there? What does Reiner anticipate Eren doing? Then why does he say he's the worst person that could have possibly had this power? Well, I can take a guess about that. Nevertheless, we are moving in a direction. The plot has a focus. It's not just we're lost we're lost and stuck in this tiny circle. They withhold a lot, but they also give a lot. And so it's satisfying. Like I'm, I'm happy with this pace. I'm happy with the plot. It's secretive, but it doesn't feel stretched out or dragged out. It felt very concise, actually. Maybe that's part of why I think season two is so enjoyable. It's it's 12 episodes and there's not a whole lot of wasted space. I think the only episode I'd say that didn't feel really tight was the one that spent a lot of time on the, on the flashback of Aaron, Mikasa, and Armin fighting the bullies. So yeah, we're heading into season three. My predictions for it are gonna be very vague, but what I got so far is that I think the the thing that Reiner said at the end there is something like a prophecy. You know, you seem to prophesize Aaron being dangerous as a coordinate or whatever that is. And you see people pushing him towards this power, but he doesn't understand it. And so who knows if that's a good thing? Who knows if that's a good idea? Aaron, who was not the most stable person to begin with, just experienced even more trauma watching Hannes die. There's a little bit of a counterbalance there, maybe with Mikasa, but it's possible that that will feed more into the idea of like, no one else matters except for me and my core group and the, the aims that I I want, want to have, which I feel like is a recipe for disaster with someone who has powers like Aaron has. Things I'm looking forward to about season three are, you know, just generally speaking, learning more about the world and the plot, seeing what the Monkey Titan's all about. He's been a, a big factor, but in the background, he's been ever present, you know, just reminding us that he's there. And then what is going to become of Reiner, Bertholdt, and Ymir? I'm really enjoying their, their dynamic. It really does feel like them against the world, which to me, even though this might be a mistake, it pulls me into their side a little bit, you know, because they become, they become underdogs, strangely. They are three people who are carrying the weight of their sins all alone. There's something about that that's appealing, if you know what I mean. So yeah, that is the end of season two. What an amazing ride. I want to thank everyone for following this series. I feel like recently it's been especially fun. I've really enjoyed reading your guys' comments, and even when we have differing points of, of view on things, it's very exciting. I feel like the conversation is really interesting. Some of the, the conversations and topics, they match the questions that the show is raising, which I think is really cool. That's a lot of fun. And just the general level of support has been amazing. So thank you to all of you for watching. On that note, special thank you to my patrons for making these videos possible, and a special shout out this week to those who joined the top tier. Shout out goes to A, Gonzalo Vega, the Costa, Benny Vera, Aaron Ramos, and Kiwi. Thank you to you for joining. Thank you to all my patrons for the support. Thanks again to everybody for watching and for, for being so cool during uh, season two of Attack on Titan and for the end of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Love you guys as always, and I'll see you very, very soon for the beginning of season three.